buried him in, in like a restricted mile. <laughs> How do we worship the King of Kings? We start with setting the scriptures, God's word to us, as our foundation. It's in these pages that we find the message of hope that God has entrusted us with to bring to the community in a way that is relevant, but never watered down. For this, we ask God to make us faithful, generous people who serve each other. The serving shouldn't be a striving for perfection, but a striving for excellence, that honors God and values character over competency, that is always growing as we develop and step into our gifts. But behind it all lies the desire to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and worship Jesus, the King of Kings. Welcome to church this morning. It's so good to have you all joining us. If you don't know me, my name is Tristan. I'm one of the pastors on staff here and I want to give a big shout out to all of our first time guests this morning. If you are visiting and watching for the first time, we consider you a guest and we are so honored to have you joining us. And so if that is you, um, I just want to ask you a small favor and if you wouldn't mind just dropping a little comment in the comment section below, just saying, hey, I'm new, I'm visiting, I'm trying things out. We'd love to connect with you and trust that you enjoy your time with us. And just a couple of announcements to mention this morning. A big reminder that our church office is open. So it's open from 8.30 to 4.30. And so if you need to pop in for an appointment or to, to get something um, that's important, rest assured that all the COVID protocols are in place and you will feel safe. Uh, then also to say that our church has a new WhatsApp number. This is just one other way to connect with us. And if you don't want a phone, you can WhatsApp. The number should be coming on the screen now. So take that down if you need to. The number is 0715912441. And you can just drop a WhatsApp to our church office for, for information about events, to book an appointment and so on. Just one more way to connect. And in fact, you can even use our WhatsApp line to, to get our prayer diary for the month of July, which is out. And that's just different things to pray for that um, Joe puts together. And so just a big reminder about that. Just drop us a WhatsApp and we can organize you our prayer diary. And then also just remember that if you aren't in a small group, um, we have many different small groups that meet in the week uh, and most of them are meeting online. And this is a great platform to feel connected, to feel part of a community and, and not to feel isolated. And so do just once again, just drop a comment below and we can help you find a small group. And this morning we are now going to hear from Damien, our youth director, and it's going to be our youth slot for a couple of minutes. So Damien, over to you. Hi there church, Damien here from The Movement, which is the youth ministry here at King Kings. And it is so nice to be able to speak to you this morning and to encourage us a little bit and say hi to my teenagers. Um, yeah, something we've been doing on our Instagram page is a video devotional series on the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's been so much fun to be able to sit and do this and to record it and to interact with your teenagers around it. And one of the main things that we explore together in the devotional is how the Holy Spirit is actively involved in our lives, how God is busy crafting something beautiful out of the brokenness we sometimes feel and experience in the world and within ourselves. And uh, we draw on this image from Genesis 1 verse 2 where we see the Holy Spirit brooding over the waters in the creation account, right before God steps in and starts to speak things into existence. And we say that this is kind of like a storm that is moving in over um, over the land, how God is coming and sweeping over um, the land, the landscape of our lives and stepping into our lives with the intention of speaking things into existence, uh, with the intention of creating something beautiful. And so I wanted to share this with you and just encourage you around this this morning as we gather together online for church. I want to remind you that the Holy Spirit is involved 
in our services, in your lives. And so wherever you're sitting, whether you're, you're at home watching TV, um, sitting on your phone, on your laptop, um, whether you're feeling good and excited, or maybe if you're honest, you're feeling a little bit disappointed and discouraged about life and everything to do with lockdown in general. And so I just want to encourage you and remind you that the Holy Spirit is involved, that God is busy crafting something beautiful out of the chaos we feel around us at the moment. He is busy working in your life, in your families, in your workspaces, in your homes. And so this morning, I just want to remind us of that as we gather together. If you want to see the rest of our devotional series, it is on Instagram. The, our Instagram handle is going to pop up because it's a little bit difficult to find if you don't know it. Um, but yeah, go check that out. They're five minute videos. If you want to go have a look, they're really, really cool. And uh, yeah, church, I'm excited for church this morning. I hope that you would experience the Holy Spirit moving in your life too. Thank you. Thanks so much, Damien. And now let's prepare our hearts for a time of worship together. Let's just pray together. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. And Lord, as we now respond out of all that you are and all that you do, Lord, may our response be meaningful. Lord, as human beings, all of us worship and have the desire to worship something. And Lord, as Christ followers, we desire to worship you. And this morning, God, may it be our heart's cry to honor you and to worship you now as we just sing songs and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Church, let's worship. Morning, church. Uh, so good to be able to praise and worship with you this morning. Let's sing together. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight it was my turn till I met. I was breathing but not alive. All my fingers I tried to hide.
really sense that uh, I wanted to encourage you with this song and it's called Christ is Enough and it's basically written from the perspective of saying Jesus you're enough for me and I don't know what you're lacking at the moment financially, uh, spiritually, emotionally but uh, just let this song minister to you and if you want to join me in declaring this even after we've looked at everything we don't have um, and then also zoning in on what we do have in Christ would you join me and let's just declare this song
Christ is my reward in all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that can ever satisfy through every trial my soul.
good to be in the presence of God together and let's continue our worship by giving to God this morning. I'd like to read from Luke 12 verse 15. It's Jesus talking and it goes like this. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And I think during times like we are in currently, it's so easy to, to hold possessions, right? To look after ourselves, our families, our needs, and that's just one of our human, human reactions to uh, just times of uncertainty, it's normal. 
But as Christ followers, as Christians, we are called to also be generous and to also be giving. And, and I think giving is such an antidote to hoarding. And it's such an opportunity for us to express Christ's love. It's how he taught us to function as a community, to be generous. And so just a reminder that you can give by EFT, Paygate, or by Zappa now in this time. And as our church office is opening up again, um, if you do need to, we really encourage you to give online. But if you do need to pop your, your giving at the office, you are able to do so. Uh, let's give now together. Hello Church, it's so good to be together again around God's Word, so appreciate the worship that has been led and let's trust the Lord for a good time together in His Word and uh, that we'll grow and especially at this time find strength in uh, what we're facing at this time. You know, it's just past midwinter, uh, 21st of June uh, has come by and uh, for me that always means a lot in that uh, we're, we're in the middle of winter and now we're, um, we're heading past at least the mathematical middle of winter, heading towards hopefully what is spring. And I remember reading a, um, a clip earlier this, uh, this last week, I'm done with winter, I want to fast forward to spring. And that's the kind of thing that I really uh, can echo with. Uh, another one was, uh, I'm not adding this year to my age. I didn't use it. And so because of the whole COVID crisis, uh, we find ourselves in a situation where we say, what has happened to our lives this year? We just want to move on. Uh, another one that I'm sure we can all identify with is, uh, I didn't know life could be so hard. Uh, how will I get through this? And I'm sure we can identify with anyone who puts it that way, their experience. Uh, and it's in the middle of the year, in the middle of such a tough time that many of you are facing, uh, we, we need to come around to really what uh, many are identifying with when it's put like this. We need a strength greater than we have. And the By Faith series has been hopefully helping you and me to come to an understanding of uh, faith is, is for the tough times as well as for the good times. But it is especially through faith that we're able to embrace the whole of life and to find that in the Lord Jesus Christ, as we put our trust in Him, uh, we find that we can get through an immense amount if we know that this is really what the Lord has for us. And that's really where this By Faith series has been leading. And we want to especially focus today on this fact that faith is not in faith. Faith is in our Lord Jesus Christ. And this has been spoken about throughout the series. And uh, we want to particularly have a look at that uh, in Hebrews chapter 12. So let's have a look at this. And he writes in chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses... Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let's have a look at these verses. And the first thing that we need to say is this. We need to accept the race marked out for us. And to accept that that race, because it's marked out for us, is finishable. So verse 12, chapter 12 verse 1 says, Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. It is a finishable race. And how do we know that? Well, the writer to the Hebrews has just said, since we are surrounded by such a great bulging mass of witnesses, a great cloud of witnesses. Uh, look at this bulging testimony of faith. And, and the point of this whole thing is not so much that, that they're in the audience, that they're in the grandstands watching us run our race, but we're in fact in the grandstands watching them run the race. 
and they're the witnesses by faith of the glory that uh, they had in their sights and enabled them to uh, to finish their race and with us they will be made perfect that's the end of chapter 11 so we're in the stands watching them and they are testimonies to faith that gets us through through the middle of our hard run I like this understanding of uh, life as a race and uh, when we were raising the children in Natal what a wonderful experience that we had long races the mid mile miles so I need to see uh, the, the um, canoe marathon the doozy canoe marathon and then of course the comrades marathon and uh, an acquaintance told me that the first 35 kilometers for any uh, runner if he's fit and, and worth his salt for him for a marathon those 35 kilometers are okay enough but after 35 kilometers he said it just seems as if the human body was not really meant to go further than 35 kilometers because he says after that point it's all pain management now the thing about the comrades marathon is that the middle point is Drummond and at Drummond you're looking between something like 40 to 45 kilometers still to go depending on whether you do the up or down run uh, from Peter Maritzburg to Durban or Durban to Peter Maritzburg and on that halfway point you've already passed the 35 kilometers and you've already got into the hard slog of pain management and you haven't even got halfway that Drummond though is an incredible place to pass and I phoned a friend uh, earlier today and said to him, I've seen the latest pictures on there and I haven't traveled along that pass for a while. Is it true what I'm looking at? There is a wall of honor there. And he says, yes, it's absolutely true. I went onto the website and if you've completed the race, you can actually get a brick for yourself. And I can imagine every runner that runs past that wall of honor of those who have finished the Comrades Marathon every runner that goes by can say that's my brick I'm gonna be there why because the witness of that wall is all the runners that have said we've done it you can do it too it's a fantastic encouragement when you see and realize that others who put their trust in Christ are now encouraging you to do the same and on what base can we accept the race as finishable? It is this. Christ began it and he finished it and he enables us to finish our race because it's a race he has marked out for us. Secondly, let us assure ourselves about Jesus Christ and why faith is in him. The writer to the Hebrews, the preacher says, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You see, Jesus as the author of our faith came to earth and died on the cross, rose again and made a way of salvation for us where when we put our trust in him, he is the author, the creator of our new life and our salvation. But he is also the perfecter. And as he finished his race it says that he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God what does that mean it means there's nothing more that he needs to do for us he started it he was like a trailblazer and he finished the work for us and he's seated watching over the finish of this race and what that means for you and me is that our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ enables us to be assured because he did from start to finish we have a course that we can run in him where every day we can trust him not only that he'll help us through this tough middle of the race this very very difficult time that we're in but we can trust him for the joy that he gives through the enduring of this journey so the psalmist writes every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever because faith is in Christ his joy can be ours and so it says who for the joy set before him endured the cross 
And he is able to give us the joy that was his as we trust him day by day in this trial and challenge of a very, very difficult year and life that many of you are facing. So first of all, please understand that Christ has marked out a race for you that is finishable because he makes it finishable. The second thing is that you can be assured about Jesus and put your faith in him. But we need to have another uh, point to have a look at and we're going to spend some time in this. In this third point that we're going to go into, it's called let's attack the causes of exhaustion. Really in the middle of the race, in the middle of a tough year, in the middle of all that you are going through, there is no doubt things that drain us, that drain you and really sap the joy out of uh, our lives and we need to identify what they are so that we can deal with them and enable ourselves to to get back into the race and uh, and find strength um, that rejuvenates us and so the writer to the hebrews says in uh, verse one let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles what's he getting at well the first thing uh, about throwing off everything that hinders it reminds us of a runner uh, in those Greek stadiums where they used to pride themselves in being able to run a good race and they'd strip down for the task and uh, they were not encumbered then by flowing robes and other paraphernalia. This point is true and the lesson is also quick to learn isn't it? We so often add into our lives all sorts of things that stress us out and weigh us down. What we need to remember also is that the laying aside of everything that hinders includes the attitudes that weigh our hearts down. Unresolved anger, feelings of never being good enough, pride about our achievements and how good we are. There are a whole host of things that we just add in as clutter into our lives, weigh us down and of course um, take away our joy. And uh, these things are exhausting. They're all of our attitudes and things that oppress us and struggle us, we need to bring to the, to the cross, so to speak, and know that the Lord Jesus Christ paid a huge price for all these things that uh, we carry in our lives. And it is there at the cross that we are able to find Him taking our burdens away by the power by which He is able to quicken us and make us live again and to bring us forgiveness and peace and strength and the cleansing work he does in our souls is is a cleaning that applies also the power of God to live a new life but the passage also points to something that I feel really burdened about in this message to deal with it's about the next clause casting aside the sin that so easily entangles it's about the fact that we need to eliminate causes of exhaustion. In my work in pastoral care, I've come to see that what's called here the sin that entangles. Whenever there's something like this that comes into our lives, it drains everything. It is exhausting. And a person's exhaustion very often is, is brought about by the things that happen in the middle of a long, hard experience. Let me illustrate it like this. In preparatory school, in grades one to three, we enjoyed egg and spoon races, three-legged races, hop, skip and jump and all that fun stuff. But in junior school, as an eight-year-old I'd just arrived, we got serious with things like sprints, hurdles and long jump and all those things that make an eight-year-old quite excited. While we were, this was all going on on our athletics day and you know, the four houses were competing with each other, a teacher called me from the grandstand and said, you're in the grade four relay race for your team. What's a relay race? I said. So she took me onto uh, the field and said, look, you're number three, Billy's number two, and he's going to run to you with a baton. Take it from him and pass it on to Stephen when you get to him, okay? Okay, I said, hey, I was excited. Yeah, 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 I'm in a race, I'm in a race. And the whistle went off, because in those days you didn't frighten kids with starting guns. And the number ones were off. And they passed the baton to number two. And Billy number two ran in and gave his baton to me. 
I ran and gave my baton to Steve number four. And something sparked in my brain that the race was really on. And as I passed him, mistakenly, I flashed by him and saw the finish line. And by now I realized, hey, we were in a race. So I hurtled off to the end of the race. I didn't know that when you passed the baton, you had to stop running. And two things happened. Stephen behind me, who was slow on the uptake, was trying to get past me. And the second thing is, at the end of it, our whole team was disqualified because I didn't give, I didn't stop running. Well, you kind of live <laughs> with those moments for the rest of your life, don't you? The passage that we're dealing with speaks of something like this. It speaks about the sin that so easily gets in your way. When you're in a race and, the, and there's a person in front of you, in your way, hindering you, preventing you from passing, Something happens in the race, doesn't it? You sort of shift your gaze now to, a, instead of lose, uh, sticking to your race plan, the race becomes all about this person that you're trying to overtake. Well, this really we need to think about. The sin of this verse is this. Whatever competes for our attention and takes our focus off Jesus Christ and His goal for us, that's the sin. The sin is a divided heart. It's a distracted life. We need to reduce everything back to perspective. Whatever is in the Lord's hands is fine for the race. Our work, our families, our commitments, our responsibilities, that's all fine. That's for the race. But when we bring into our lives the attitudes that distract and take our gaze off Jesus, what's not in the Lord's hands becomes burdens on our backs and takes away our joy and saps our strength and we become exhausted because the race is no longer about Jesus and about the glory that he has called us to the whole focus has been taken off him and the writer to the Hebrews says let's fix our eyes back on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith but we need to also ask ourselves something and I feel really burdened about this is it possible that just as I was in front of Stephen, that we in the way that we relate to others can be hindering them in their race? Are we competing with anyone or making it hard for them to run freely with a Christ focus, the way we relate to them or deal with them? Do we have the tendency occasionally to have a tussle develop between us so that the focus shifts from their game plan to how to cope with us or how to deal with us? Are we a hindrance to the race? You see, it sh we should never be a cause of another's stumbling. And the preacher to the Hebrews in these last two chapters again and again urges that we are to be an encouragement to others rather than a hindrance to them. He says later on that, for example, the lame may not be disabled but rather be healed. That people may be helped rather than hindered. Perhaps it's time for us in the middle of the race, when we feel exhausted, when we feel stressed out, to also reflect on how are we doing in the race in our effect also on others. But let's finish then with a final point. This final point is, I call it this, drawing strength from fellowship with Christ. You see, verse 3 says, Consider him who endured, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. It reminds me of that expression that Paul uses, the fellowship of his sufferings. You see, when the race is really tough, when the going is ridiculously hard, when it feels as if it's just so hard going, how am I ever going to get uh, through this? There is an encouragement for us that I really want to share from this passage when we consider Jesus. I know that most of us do not suffer as those who are persecuted for their faith. But some of you are paying a high price for making a stand for Jesus. But where we endure for doing what is right and good, the loving thing for Jesus' sake, there is a fellowship in some small way of his sufferings there for you. And Paul writes in this way, he says, I want to know Christ. You see, there he's fixing his eyes on Jesus. And as he fixes his eyes on Jesus, something comes through that is really important for you and for me. 
He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. The Greek is koinonia. And that word is used kind of two, in two other places in that uh, book of Philippians. In chapter 1 verse 5, where he uses this word fellowship, it's not about suffering. It's about the partnership that others have in the gospel with him. And in chapter 2 and verse 1, where he uses this term fellowship again, it also is not in a context of suffering. It's rather about the loving fellowship that the Holy Spirit gives to his people. The point is this, wherever you have to endure, wherever God allows in the race that he has marked out for you, wherever that endurance is needed, there God meets you in fellowship. Perhaps I can illustrate it like this. One of the most exciting things to watch for many of us is uh, the French Tour de France. And in that long and arduous race where, where the cyclists uh, are taken to the limit of their endurance, there is something so exciting that is brought about uh, in the middle of every race. And it's called the peloton. The peloton is where those cyclists get together. The front rider is always doing the hard work. And we've spoken already about Jesus going ahead of us and making the way for us to follow. But the peloton is a powerful feature of the race because it brings everyone into one mind for the long, hard stretches of the race. The wind and sounds of the peloton drive everyone along. Everybody is in race mode. They've got their plans and they're all together and they see the end in sights in their minds and in their hearts. Now, when it says of Jesus that he is the author and the perfecter of our faith, it's a device that also means that he is everything in between as well. You see, Jesus is your helper, not only in the fact that he creates new life for us, and that he is the finisher showing us that it's a sure and glorious end, but he is the peloton in the middle, enabling us to focus on the race. Jesus is your peloton, and that's where you get your strength from. Your endurance is found in him. I urge you, if you slacked out of him, get back into him, who is your help. Doesn't Isaiah 41 verse 10 put it so wonderfully? Fear not, for I am with you. You see, that is a name of God, an Emmanuel type name, where wherever God is with you, that's what Emmanuel means. It's an Emmanuel concept. It's a koinonia concept. It is a fellowship concept. I am with you in fellowship. So in all that you are facing, do not be dismayed. For I am your God. And how am I your God? I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Oh church, it's time to take courage. It's time to find strength and to get back in the race that the Lord has given you to run. He will enable you to do it. You put your trust in him. So how can I make Jesus my strength each day? Well, first of all, let's own Christ as the author and perfecter of our faith. Secondly, let's keep all our stresses and attitudes as that which Jesus owns. He owns our families. He owns our business, the, the work that we're trying to do and want to do if we don't have a job. He owns the stresses and, and the responsibilities that we face. And because he owns them, they're in his hands. And by releasing all of this into the Lord Jesus' hands, what he gives back to us in our work and in our family and in our responsibilities is the joy of handling them. He is our strength. So let's meet with him in the middle of the long, hard life that he has called us. Let's meet with him daily, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, where we relate to him and draw from him and find that he is with us in all that we are facing. And finally, let's make it a habit to ask him for help and to rest in his loving care. May God be with you as you put this into thought and practice. Let me pray for you. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for the challenge of this passage. And as we bring this to our minds and to our hearts, 
I pray for everyone who at this time is going through something that they feel they can't even get through. May they find as they put their trust in you that you bring your peace to their troubled hearts. May they find in you strength they've never found in themselves. And may they find as they put their trust in you that you are like that peloton around them, enabling them to focus on the race and to see the end in their sights. Dear Lord, be their strength. For anyone, Lord, who feels convicted that things have not been right in the way they've been handling others, will you enable them to put their focus back on you, to fix their gaze on you, and to be liberated back into the joy of all that you give to those who trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name with thanks. Amen. Thank you, Ian, for such an inspiring message. Um, Church, it's been so good to have you all joining us this morning. Just a reminder that tonight at 6 p.m. we have our Facebook Live worship session. And that's going to be a special time together. And, you know, even if it's busy at home, just pop it on in the background and worship as you can. It's so good to be in the presence of God together. And so that's 6 p.m. on our church Facebook page tonight for our worship session. But that's it for today. God bless you. We might see you tonight or otherwise next week. God bless.